What is up guys, Control here, and today's video is going to be on Pursuit of Perfection plus a Soul Slash Invokes. Very cool combo because the Invoke cards go ahead and allow you to get the scaling for the Pursuit of Perfection and Suppressible online. So you can then go ahead and drop top a 1 mana 30-30 with Overwhelm, which you pay 5 mana for because of the spell. But still, really, really good. The list changed a little bit, so the first version that we played went about 7 and 12, which wasn't really that great. Uh, but, you know, we decided to finally change some stuff up and finished off with a nice 5-2 streak with a 5 win streak to start it off with two losses in the end still pretty good though so the idea was to run a bunch of one ofs that were just decent and then three ofs for a lot of the solid invoke cards like sketcher behold the infinite solari priestess mountain scryer and star shaping and then two asols so generally the idea was just that we would be able to invoke individual cards that would then scale the good old pursuit of perfection which is really sweet and one of the things that ended up making this deck work really well was just the invokes to kind of just give us a different removal options when you need it or different units to develop to kind of just pop off and clear our opponent's board or contest the board with. Just really good. Really big key card of the stack, Mountain Scryer. It's one that makes all of the invoke cards a lot better because, well, they make the Celestial cards cost one less. So you get to kind of ramp with them a little bit quicker. So definitely look out for this guy. I would see don't really keep any super big cards. Like you don't really want the Mind Splitter, Asol, or Skies Ascent in your opening hand. They get a little bit better later on. But, you know, instead look for the early invoke cards, which is cards like Gift Giver, Thermo Beam. Those are all pretty good. Got the allegiance ratio 32 to 8 as well. So we do have the good old mountain scry online quite often. So I would say that's a pretty good number to be aiming for. Uh, you know, anything around like you know six, seven, eight, nine is probably fine. Anything a little bit more than that's probably too much because I mean missing this allegiance is just so so big. I would say overall the deck is really fun, but it is one that is not that competitive again. So our, like our overall score, I mean, if you compile everything, I mean, I think that we went two or three games negative overall with this deck over like a six hour period of playing, which isn't that great. Uh, but it was a lot of fun though. We did also only pull off the Pursuit of Perfection one time because basically the turn that we could play it, our opponents would concede. I think that happened three or four times, so I didn't get to play it because of that. Or I would die the turn before I could play it. But we got to play it one time and that was satisfying enough for me. I was looking forward a couple more times. It didn't quite happen, but we did have quite a few more wacky and fun situations with all of the juice of Invoke cards and ASOL. So definitely a fun deck to play with if that's kind of your thing. You want to play a big mass of things and, well, just have really satisfying dubs. Definitely give this deck a spin and, you know, enjoy the video, boys. It was a fun one to make. I didn't think I was going to play this deck for six whole hours, but I was actually having a pretty good time with it. And I was uh, super dead set on getting this to work like twice for me, but unfortunately it just wasn't the case where it did. And sometimes it just happens. You know, so some days you'll load up a deck like this and get it off like three times in an hour. And other times, you know, six hours, you only get it off once. Just how it goes. Enjoy the video, guys. Sorry for the late upload. I will be back tomorrow at about 1 p.m. PST for YouTube, and I'm going to be going live on Twitch right after this is up. Have a great one. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys tomorrow. MFGP, another matchup where we're never going to get Pursuit off in most cases. Tiger, how you done? Guiding Touch, Press Priest. This is kind of like a good turn three play. Scry Iron 4 is fine. I think good. Healing's nice. I feel like just having like one of these bigger Celestial cards and basically any matchup is just good. Feels like it's a pretty easy way to just like stabilize against like these faster decks because you just like have your big Celestial card trade into their, you know, mid or bigger, uh, mid size to bigger unit. One of the things that really helps bridge the gap with that is just a Scryer. To have that on my quick. Yeah. Surprise for winning the lab. You... I don't know. There's no prize. You just get to play. Invoke. This is really interesting. Very, very tough decision. I think I actually take Supernova over the Crescent. I think I do still play the Priestess as well. I could actually pass here and then just play the Scryer next round and Supernova would be online for five though. Except for I don't have a Celestial card in hand. That's why I have to play this. Moon Silver, Immortal Fire, or Written in Stars. What I got? I probably wanted the Moon Silver there, but that's fine. Be worse. Living Legends could be anything even a Supernova. Yeah, but it could also not be a Supernova and my hand's kind of big. Which means that it's difficult for me to play it. You're not wrong though. I'm going to save the HP. It could be wrong though because I do just have so much healing in my hand. Uh, Meteor Shower is kind of good.
Was the MF? Serpent's definitely. Not. I mean, dude, the one health units just really aren't that great because they don't do anything into the MF attack. Like, yeah, I can attack with a charger, and that's cool. But I mean, does that really do anything? I don't really think so. Feel like it doesn't at least. Pass. Hey, buddy, you gotta relax. So clear the MF, he plays a Gangplank. I never get to save all my spell mana here. It's gonna just bad. Maybe I just pass. Mid nine. Play something, I get more info. Okay, well that already makes me a lot more happy about this turn now. Honestly, I'm kind of like really happy to do this. He's not playing Gameplay, he's not playing Jack the Ripper. Something 4 or less is still kind of scary sometimes, but not as scary as a 2-1 that does 3 damage. So possible. Yeah, open's fine. I could play Raven for good trades. I could play Written in Stars to get Aesol slash Leona. I could invoke to get a big card. My hand just has so much value in it right now. It's really weird. I want to have this as an option, but I don't just want to play like three mana at one two. Passing's kind of a grief, but I think I'm going to pass here. See what he's going to do for more info. Salvage, sure. Uh, card draw for him is really good, obviously. It just keeps him in the game for longer. I think because he's not like going super, super wide, I can play Priestess and not be super upset about it. Uh, Meteor Shower, Golden Sisters. I got like, the Sisters now. See, I actually don't think I like 5-5 five, five that much. I don't think 5-5 five, five is bad by any means, but I just don't like it as much as other plays, I think. Leona, so I'm guaranteed to get Ace off if Britain and Stars now. Supernova's bad here. I think that I just like this. Um, I can give the gem to this to kind of make it so the GP Overwhelm doesn't like completely ruin my life. He also gets Rex next round. That's uh, one important thing to know. So I force 3-3 three, three to trade into this because of Rex, so I still heal a little bit. And my elusive card goes in. Seems good. I'd really like to say that I could just use this as a blocker, but I mean, it's not going to work. Sure. Phone 9. Sure. Could have healed that out of range. I should have definitely done that. Pretty clear fuck up. No doubt about that. Gain four more health, have a better blocker here. Kind of just really bad for me, not gonna lie. It's okay though. Really bad plays are expected, I think at least. Go to eight, all of our units are cleared. See, that's fine, even though it's really not. Rex is going to do a lot of damage to us here. I don't think it straight up kills us, though. Just let him Rex to Raven to heal us for three. Then Rex does four word, four health. Could also just like play the star shaping as well. I don't know if I can really say that I'm going to be able to play Aesol next round. Feels like that's a grief. He's way too wide. My hand's too full for this to be good, but sure. I'm going to 10 cards now as well. I'm at 8 for this. I think I just threw because I kind of have to play this now. Maybe we just say overdraw is not relevant. 
That's me, sure. I can cycle the touch now, but I might have to play Leona with it, uh, buff now. Asil for 9 is not leveled, so it's like kind of irrelevant to do that. It'll be a 12 12. I discover another card that I can't play. This game is a grief and a half, man. Holy shit. I'm going to play Shield Bearer just for a unit. If I pull a win here, man, I don't even know what to say. That'd be insane. Gonna play a Subversible, though. Leona sounds bad. Subversible, then he rexes my mid sized board, then he gets to open attack and win the game. So I lose. Um, hmm. Yeah. Engaging. Hard go, attack mode. Bless the faithful and fear the heavens. So I get my five damage in instead of just losing every time. I'm one of the good guys. Meth, okay. I don't have removal for MF, so she just goes off. Invoke Meteor Shower is five. I don't think there's anything for four or less that I can get that'll clear here. I can get stuns, I can get silences, I can get things to reduce the cost of cards, but I can't get um, actual removal for her. I can start shaping this round, save some mana. Play a gem to heal a little bit. I don't really understand why I'm still looking at this and thinking it's like something I can do. I can pick Messenger Traveler from this as an option. Nope, not options. Um, See, that is something, so I don't ever draw. And I guess I would still play this then. Even though it just dies. It blocks stuff. And just pass. DP's flips. Still one man off the so I don't know why I haven't just played this. I guess this is because he's not leveled. It doesn't really feel good. I'm dead to Rex right now. Nothing I do is really going to change that then. You can play another card that draws things. Kind of good. I know Starship makes me live through Rex, but I just don't really understand what order I want to do it in. This is almost playable. Maybe I just don't want like the 5-5 five five anymore. That was bad. Invoke for something. Draw one. Challenger is probably more valuable than draw one at this point. I have a really big hand already. It's one of your mana cards that I could play. Okay, this is making me play more cards, so then the Rex does more. I think at least. This should be the pick. If I do this, he just rexes me, and then like this card's not even good. I think I have to do the written stars here. Because I'm gonna need to get the Aesol out eventually. Maybe that's not even true. I kinda do just like win with this hand, I guess. I don't know. Is playing this first better? Seven. Look at three cards. I have five spell mana. I can play Pursuit sometimes. I don't, I'm not going to get enough cheap cards to play Pursuit with it though, so it's not worth. Um, You could be right. So if I did that and got the big elusive card, it could potentially live through Rex. Yeah. That would be an out. I think you're right. He didn't get the nab. He also does not have Rex here. He doesn't have another unit I believe with Leona, so I should play it. Chosen of the sun. 
Maybe it just didn't make much sense to play this entire game with like the mindset that I can like play around slash interacts because if he has a card, I kind of just lose no matter what and I really can't do anything about it. So maybe like the entire way that I approached this game and tried to play it was just like fundamentally wrong because of that reason. Okay, so I play this, then I play one card, then I play Pursuit of Perfection. I play 3-3. Three, three. And then we play 5 mana 2020. Or 5 mana 33, sorry. It's so confusing to me that out of all matchups that I could play this card in, it's this one that I get to play it in now. So we play Pursuit, we get the 1 mana 30 30 Overwhelm. Okay. He's got one card and nine health. We can't die here. Okay. We pass. Keep up the great streams. And we play a second cat. Because one cat's not enough. But he surrenders as we play the second cat. Thank you for the 10. Force lightning. Holy dude. That game felt doomed the entire time. I'm not going to lie, boys, but that's... Probably most games when you're actually getting the pursuit off, they will feel pretty bad for the most part. I don't know about the invokes, man. Like, I, I chose a 9 mana obliterate card and then he played nothing big. Like, the biggest thing he played was the 3 mana 3-3 three, three allegiance, uh, allegiance nab. He played no gangplanks. Like, maybe it's only a one of in his deck. I thought it would be like a Jack the Ripper gangplank deck and, like, the obliterates would actually be good. But it ended up that that was just, like, a dead card the entire game. So maybe like my greedy plays with like the early invokes actually made it a lot harder to win. Uh, but obviously super nice that we got there in the end, man. Like that's so dope. Ash Thresh, this is a deck that's going to play for a soul stuff later on. Uh, but hold the infinite for invoking early is probably fine. It's definitely a faster, sorry, a slower matchup. So I think playing for your greedy cards is okay. It's less ideal than a couple of the other early game cards, but it's still fine. Also, the tracker has not updated for some reason. I think it's, um, it's bugged right now. So I'll try and restart it. It feels weird to me, like the tracker seems good for like the first hour or two, then it just kind of starts getting wacky and not actually tracking all the games you're playing. Ice Veil targets, but isn't affected by spell shields? True. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a skill or spell, so. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a skill, I guess, but it's like, it's not fast or slow, right? It's fast or slow skills that it can negate, not the burst speed ones. Like the, um, the effect from Ice Veil Archer. It's going to drop top Cosmic Inspiration. Hard YOLO it. Say less bomb. Sign me up. Honestly. I can't do it on round four. Because I don't have a card to use it with. But uh, come round five, we can. Has to have the little circle next to its effect for it to be considered sort of a skull. Yeah. So that just means that you can respond to it basically when it's played. Because there's a lot of uh, like burst speed play effects. I don't know if that's the way you should think about it though, but that's how like I see them in my head at least. Maybe they should change the wording? Yeah, you could be right. So pick a card off this that I don't play yet. Or I could play Gift Giver. I'll always play this for now, Gift Giver next rounds. I'm gonna pick a Warrior. We need units in hand, not removal. The obliterate stuff is pretty bad on Aesol because it only works this, uh, if you like trigger the spell shields and our deck doesn't have a good way to do that. I think they do update a lot of wording every patch, but there's always like more that needs to be changed, right? So it gets kind of difficult to go through everything. Um, I'm gonna have five, six mana next round if I play Scryer. So if I hit the Allegiance, this play is better than going for Gift Giver and Floating Mana. Because I can go Cosmic Inspiration for six. Nice, we hit. 
Uh, Moonsilver a big card. I feel like Moonsilver for tempo is better. Even like one mana 6-3 is kind of insane too, right? Maybe just a one mana 6-3 luck over the tempo stuff. Kind of like it. Zero mana right now, actually. Okay. No one of a Vimer? Nope, that could be a change that I could make, though. It would be good to slap on five. Only problem is that there really aren't very many cards to protect him, and he's a very squishy unit. That was kind of why I just didn't really figure that I wanted to run him. Also, I want my allegiance numbers to be high, because I really like Scryer in this deck. Is this a control deck or mid-range deck? Doesn't seem like an aggro deck. It's definitely not an aggro deck now. It's uh, it's more of a for-fun deck. Like, I'm trying to play for Pursuit of Perfection, uh, which is a very, very late game oriented card that just means that if you play 20 cards this game, you get to summon a 1 mana 30-30 with Overwhelm. That's generally the idea of the deck that I'm playing here. So our Mountain Scar is going to die, so this is back to being 1 mana. Let's get the Cosmic Inspiration as these cards are... Actually, sorry, it won't die because we're buffing it. Bram. It's not going to die, so we still got to play this as a 1 mana 6-3 here. Absolutely massive inspiration here, though. It's going to, like, completely swing the ties of this game. And the 1 mana 30-30 just died a single target removal. Yep. For sure, game. You can get bopped pretty easily, my friends. The Bastion felt really weird there. I'm not too sure why he did it. Players were in Hush, I guess, so he's trying to, like, cheat out an early ASOL, maybe. But that's, like, a little bit off, if you ask me. This is the wrong path. Just take the blocks. I mean, my health isn't really that important, so I can maybe just do this. Get rid of the, uh, the Serpent. Because, I mean, our deck does run a lot of cards that do heal, so... Important to take note of that. On six mana next round, so you can't vengeance my warrior either. It's pretty good. <laughs> I mean. Imagine not doing that. You could double cosmic inspiration, you just don't do it. Oh, miss me with that. Because Thrash is going to be leveled now, though. It's just kind of unfortunate. Be a flash. Wait, Bastion only lasts for one round. What was the point of that? I didn't even process that. But he Bastion is Thrash for the, the one single round. That's very confusing. Uh, I don't really want to attack because then I mean he just gets to bubble the thresh quicker. So I just pass. To be fair, I'm just gonna hush him, I guess, but Ooh, that's juicy. He goes with small things, thresh pulls at the end. He doesn't. My whole problem here is I really don't want the thresh to flip. Can also vengeance the unit here. So even if I just block, I only block three of them, I guess. That'd be the plan. Not like our units are dying here. You can glimpse them and flip them, I guess. But I mean, I think we're kind of okay. That's just really worth. Um, so I guess if like I did that, he wouldn't get the scaling. Is that the logic? You're probably right then. Yeah, I could agree with that. I also think I probably heal my face this round. I'm sitting at 10 mana and I'm just going to float so much if I only play Warrior. I think that I do agree with you. My play was probably just bad. Supernova is good. Um, I can't play it here because it's like going to be 7. Or it's going to be 8, sorry. In general, it's good. 
I lack a ping still, though, for the A soul, so it's not really that worth. Maybe like a, an Immortal Fire type look. The spell shield here means that it doesn't die to Renation, though. I think I took the Destroyer inside. But I guess the thing is with the Elusive unit, I mean, I just get it back anyways, so it's not even a big deal. It's like when it, when it dies, it gets resummoned, right? I think I do agree with you guys, though. If I was going to play this round better, or more correctly, I guess, I would actually go ahead and use the Hush on the Thresh. It, like, I mean, 4 or 6 is not, like, super sketchy as far as it goes for leveling him, but, I mean, it would still do stuff. I think there's still merit to what I did as well, but I feel like making it so he doesn't get an Aurelian soul faster than me is probably the easiest way that I can win. Have any of you ever played double Cosmic Inspiration in the game? I've only ever played one, and the game was over, like, almost right away. Um, I basically, every single time I played the card, it really never was this drawn out. Where it wasn't really, like, this close. Not that this game's gonna be close, but, I mean, he could play removal cards and make it a lot more difficult for us to win. Obviously, we're in a very dominating position if you look at the board right now. There's really no doubt about that. So I do think I just play my Destroyer here. If he plays Renation, I lose everything but the Destroyer. Destroyer goes in. I guess he could technically like Vile Feast and then Renation the Destroyer. If he does that, we kind of have a game then. Otherwise, they sort of just challenge and attack with everything, kills board. He's got eight mana to work with. So I guess he opens a lot better. Like a lot, lot better. Yeah, we'll go with the blade that doesn't suck, I guess. I mean, realistically, our board's more than big enough. Dude, I just love looking at these big cards in my hand. Can't do both before I attack? Um, true, yeah, yeah, true, true, you're right, you're right. He couldn't put that on sack. I'd have to, like, respond to something. And I wouldn't respond to something, so yeah, you're right. I think I've been live today. Yep, we're at the magic point. Uh, the four-hour mark. So I can make my OBS smaller and show. Where brain light begins. Luck the Everwhelm card, I like it. How fun are one hour Runeterra games now? I mean, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be a one hour game. I did play like a 30, 40 minute game today. And it's not like those are that uncommon. I mean, they used to play Karma Control. And I mean, even like the Swing Control games that I would play would be upwards of 30 minutes fairly often actually, depending on the matchup. I remember like uh, when I started playing Swain at the start of last expansion when nobody else played him and he was bad or considered bad. I played a Swain control deck, the Masters, and everybody would play the Karina control deck. And Karina control was like a 20, 30 percent matchup for me. And that's like playing perfectly in the matchup, like everything, you know, as well as I could. And it would take like 30 minutes to win and it would take like 20 minutes to lose. So I absolutely had my brain melt playing that matchup over and over again because of how long it would take and how pointless it felt a lot of time. But sometimes it's just the game and how it goes. This healing cycle. Mm, do I get rid of my E-Souls maybe? Maybe like even Mind Splitter. The gem is just a card for the pursuit. Only at 9 this. Maybe just get rid of the gem because we have more in the deck for it. Mm, Messenger is good. Like the prompt. I love how it's just like a one mana 6-6 six, six draw card. So good. Mana E5 Overwhelm cards seem good. Yeah, they're sort of decent, honestly. I would run this in my aggro deck. For sure. Just draw. 4 mana 8-8. Eight, eight. It's a little bit better than a 4 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. Shaping, sure. Predict that players will start to tire these much longer games and the metal will swing back towards faster decks. I mean, if you're looking at like higher ranks, uh, I can guarantee you already like the metagame is very quick. Away. Like uh, decks that have hit rank one masters recently for NA. Uh, the night wall, night, the nightfall one that I did my video on yesterday or today, actually, that was uh, a very, very quick deck. It's one that has more sticking power than most aggressive lists to do. And it's actually really fun to play. It's uh, it's not a very straightforward aggro deck, basically. 
So that's one of the very quick decks that are good. Uh, but you're also seeing players play a lot of decks that just end on game eight or turn eight, sorry, turn eight, turn nine. TF Swain is still very popular. Uh, a lot of Ezreal decks are still being played with like Riptide Rex ending games a lot of time on eight. And uh, I think that there's some players playing stuff like Aesol, but he's a little bit too slow for sure, I think. Lulu Shen, Lulu Zed is another good example of a very, very fast deck that people are playing much more than ones like the one I'm playing right now. And my opponent, obviously, as well. I think that Agra is still definitely the metagame. And basically will always be. These decks are really fun to play. But the thing is, if you want to climb with them, it's going to take way too long in a lot of cases. Most people have, like, jobs and stuff. So they don't have enough time to play all these games. Oh, man. You got to... You know, that's a big F in the chat for this guy, man. Oh, dude. I don't even want to show him what my hand is, man. Honestly. Just slop down a 16-11. Six mana card. Actually, it's disgusting. Do you think they would swap the mana cost between the seven and eight spells from Indoke? Maybe. That could help balance a little bit more. I think Cosmic Gray is really strong, though. It's not like it's a bad card. I picked it in one quite a few times with it. Cosmic Inspiration is just kind of ridiculous, though, because you can play it on four. I don't really know if they need to balance the bigger cards, though, a lot of the time. And it's not even like spells like this that feel like they're that insane. It's more like the one of units that you can get when you're playing aggro decks. Like Nightfall just ripping like a uh, destroyer is so good. And here's where I, keep my constellation. I mean, if you ask me about it, I don't think there's anything really wrong about that either. Like, I, think, I think it's fine that you have options to play bigger stuff like that. Surrey. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I was going to play your deck later today, but I keep on just like playing this and having fun. So I continue to play this deck instead. So I play Aurelian Soul with uh, a lot of power. I don't have any more Overwhelm, so it's not like I can do anything with that. I have double Spell Shield Renation, so I'm going to do anything to me. Um, I did not mean to pick that. I quit. I clicked too quickly. Don't play Targ Lisa and I will regret it. Why? Why will I regret it? I do like Lee Sin. It's not fun to lose. Did you lose a lot with it today? Is it one of those like rank one decks that you basically hit like rank two masters and then you're like, okay, I'm going to play my one game with the rank one deck to get rank one. And it's like, boom, rank one with X or Y deck. I, I haven't really done those for this game because I've never been rank one. But in Hearthstone, that was one of my specialties. I was really good at doing that. Go big idiots. I would hit rank one and then like play random stuff at it. And then just like put rank one in the title. It's really good. People like to watch things that hit rank one. You go back to those days like rank one Galakron Warrior, 15k views, quest Malleolock, only nine. Yeah. There was one period where I was like the first rank one. And nobody else really hit it anytime close to that. And I got to play a bunch of really, really dumb stuff on rank one. Like complete, like 30% meme decks at best. And he conceded. Okay. Dude, we need to get the ASOL plus the Burstable one of these games, man. We're just not hitting the pursuits. We've been playing for like four hours now. We've got one pursuit actually casted. I will say that was definitely a banger of a game though, for sure.